this uh, segment of the Turtis Vanloff project, I want to talk about uh, musical interpretation. Now, uh, you might think it's a bit strange to talk about musical inter interpretation from the standpoint of experimental psychology. And in fact, uh, experimental psychology doesn't put many constraints on musical interpretation, and that's one of the things I want to talk about. Uh, when we talk about musical interpretation, what we're talking about is how do you translate notes on a sheet of music into a live performance? And what is the role of the performer? There are a lot of discussions about this. There are a lot of debates about it. Uh, some people feel strongly that uh, the musician should uh, be faithful to the original intent of the composer and try to play the music as close to what the composer intended as possible. This attempt at authenticity sometimes goes so far as to involve playing the piece of music on so-called period instruments or instruments that were commonly used at the time that the composition uh, was, uh, was originally conceived. Uh, even if you don't subscribe fully to the period instrument rationale, there are other folks who consider certain pieces of music as having kind of an acceptable interpretation, sort of a standard interpretation, if you will, and try to perform the piece in that manner. In fact, uh, music students are often encouraged to listen to recordings of a piece of music and trying to figure out how they should play the, the music themselves. Well, from a standpoint of psychology, the only relevant factor for a musical performance is to produce an emotional and significant experience for the audience. And from that perspective, there are very few limitations on what liberties the performer might wish to take in order to maximize the impact of the piece. Turns out the, how the performer approaches this thing can have dramatic effects on the nature of the performance and the experience of the audience. To illustrate that, I want to play for you in a couple of different ways the uh, uh, last movement of the first of the Bach cello suites. This thing is called a jig. And when Bach wrote this music, he didn't include any fingerings, any bowings, uh, any uh, 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 dynamic markings. He just put, put the notes on the page. And you can assume immediately from that that Bach was not dictating how the notes were to be interpreted. So if I were to play the notes the way that they appear on the page, this is what it would sound like. It's a gig, and so it's in three quarter time, and da, da. You can just almost see people dancing. And it almost seems like kind of dribbling a ball. And the music doesn't move very much. It doesn't seem to go anywhere. And after a while, this it gets kind of boring. So here's another version. It's almost like it's a totally different piece. What makes it different is that I've taken the notes that are repeated and I've connected them together. And so I play it. And what that does is it puts the emphasis of the 
uh, beat on the second beat of the measure instead of the first, and so it breaks up this da 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 da. It's da 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 da, which makes it quite a bit more exciting. <laughs> I would suggest. So here's the piece. <laughs> he might play Bach. Would Bach be upset by hearing his music performed this way? I rather doubt it. First of all, I suspect that Bach would be flattered that his music is being played at all more than 250 years after his death. I would hope, being a good musician <laughs> and uh, interested in sound and sequencing, that he would be pleased to hear this piece played on the viola, even though he composed it for the uh, cello. And I bet he'd be kind of amused by these syncopations, which were not clearly indicated in the uh, original composition. Anyway, it's kind of fun, isn't it? So when I approach a piece of music, the last thing I do is to listen to a recording. That may be good or bad, <laughs> but what I'm aiming for is uh, maximum impact as best as I can produce it uh, for the audience. Thank you. <laughs> 